Welcome back friends. In today's discussion, uh, we are going to discuss about the elements of orthology. The facilitator in this session, I am Dr. Mlelo and this is the session 3 in glossy anatomy, which is at the code of AN 100.01. So, let's uh, start in our discussion. Orthology, the objectives of this session uh, is first to name the major joints, explain the structure of joints, of major joints of the body, and link the structure to the function and the major diseases of joints. Uh, by definition, arthrology is the study of joints. And as we know that joints, they are sites where two or more bones, they tend to articulate or they tend to meet. So... It is better to use the word articulate rather than using the word meet because two bones they don't meet actually, they articulate. There is articulating surface. In between the two bones we have the articulating surface and it is where we can name it the joint. So joints see they lead to movement. Without joints we can't move and joints they are very important to perform different kinds of movement. As we discussed in the introduction to anatomy we saw different kinds of movements such as flexion, extension, uh, circum circumduction and different kinds of movement. All of those they are performed by joints and they are prone to different types of diseases due to the movement. So we shall discuss later about the uh, clinical aspect of uh, these uh, elements of uh, arthrology. Here is just the introduction. Later when we will be discussing different parts of the body we discuss one joint after another so classification of joints we can classify joints in two bases first uh, basing on the joining material or basing on the degree of movement basing on the joining material joints they are classified as a fibrous joint cartilaginous joints or sometimes they are called as synchrodrons and synovial joints also, basing on the degree of movement, we have sine arthrotic joint. These they do not permit movement. Then we have amphartrotic joint. They permit limited movement. And then we have diarthrotic joints. They permit free movement. So let's go in detail on these joints and the examples. Uh, this diagram just summarizes uh, some of the types of joints. For example, here we have the, the knee joint. Uh, we have the synovial joint. J just the generalized structure of the synovial joint had the fibrous capsule and the synovial membrane. The, uh, together, fibrous capsule and the synovial membrane, they are called as joint capsule. And then we have the articulating cartilage. Here in between, you have the cavity filled with the synovial fluid. And this help to reduce uh, friction at the joint. So, actually this is the generalized structure of synovial joint and here is the knee joint structure of the knee joint. Here we have the, the patella bone. Here we have the interpatellar pad. Here we have the tibia. Then we have fibula here. Uh, I mean we have femur. So, fibula is not shown in this diagram but you have just the femur and the tibia. This is the knee joint you know, among the common example of synovial joint. Also we have an uh, example of a fibrous joint here which is present in the suture. Suture is the joint, is the one among the example of fibrous joint is how we shall discuss it later. Soon from this slide we shall discuss about the types of synovial joint. Also we have um, syndesmosis. Syndesmosis also is a type of fibrous joint which is always made up of the interlocious membrane. Also here the example for primary cartilaginous joint which is here we have the uh, hip joint example of primary uh, cartilaginous joint and the, then we have the, the example of secondary cartilaginous joint which is intervertebral disc. So we we'll discuss later about the classification. This diagram is taken from more clinical oriented anatomy. So classification of joints, see, even some of the books, see, they have classified them in his, uh, as if different groups, like any, the same thing. So now, 
let's see about the fibrous joint fibrous joints articulating bones are held by fibrous tissue fibrous tissue most joints are immovable easy fibrous things are quite immovable a few allow a small degree of mobility the growth of mobility depends on the length of fibers or collagen uniting articulating bones kuna chukona au unachokuja kuona kwenye fibrous joint ni kwamba most of them they are they immovable but some of them they permit movement a few degree or a small degree of movement and the degree of movement depends on the depends on the length of the fibers so uh, our common example of fibrous joint we have first sutures sutures they are joints which are present in the scar bones here in the sutures edges of articulating bones interlock and tightly held by a thin layer of fibrous tissue so because the the layer of fibrous tissue is thin and the bones they are interlocked means the length of fibers here they are short so such as they don't allow any movement and here is the diagram which show the the suture joint as how we can see uh this is the sagittal suture we have the coronal suture and these are different bones we have the frontal bone you have the parietal bone then you have the inferior temporal line uh this is the first example of fibrous joint and then we have the syndesmosis syndesmosis as we said that uh, they are made up of interlocious membrane so bones are held by a sheet of fibrous tissue ligament or interlocious membrane so sometime uh, in in these syndesmosis we have ligament for example here we have interlocious ligament or sometimes it is interlocious membrane like here the joint between uh, fibula and the tibia kwa hiyo this is the joint present in the in the lower limb present in the lower limb as how we can see the lateral malleolus and the medial malleolus of the of the lower limb so these are just examples here because the length of these fibers is somewhat long so they permit a small degree of movement here there is some degree of mobility example distal radio ulna and the tibiofibular joint this which is shown in the diagram with the tibiofibular joint but we have also radio ulna joint in the upper limb the same as this interlocious membrane present between the fibula and the tibia so another example of fibrous joint is gomphosis 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 this is the peg end socket between the tooth and the mandible or maxilla as you can see this is the our tooth and then you have the clone of the tooth here then here uh, below we have the fibers connecting between the tooth and the the mandible or maxilla this can be any any of the jaw bones either mandible or maxilla so as how you can see this is the root of the teeth then you have the periodontal ligament you have the alveolar bone all of these they make up a structure called gomphosis so this is also an example of fibrous joint here is the gingiva and then you have the crown of the teeth so now let's go to the cartilaginous joint cartilaginous joint here bones that are united by higher line or fibrocartilage higher line or fibrocartilage so uh here in terms of cartilaginous joint we have two types of cartilaginous joint which are primary cartilaginous joint and the secondary in the primary they are joined by higher line cartilage and permit no movement joined by higher line cartilage and permit no movement and for example here we have the epiphyseal cartilage or epiphyseal plate which allow bones growth in young subject or in young young child and in adults it is replaced by a bone as we discussed in your theology that this epiphyseal plate uh in childhood it is the plate which allow the elongation of the bone but as as a child grows longer during adolescence it is converted into a bone so after adolescence probably somebody cannot grow longer because the epiphyseal plate has already been converted into a bone also another example of um, of primary cartilaginous joint is manubrium manubrium 
I mean the hyaline cartilage joining between the uh, ribs and the manubrium and this is uh, uh, ribs and the, the sternum this is called the, the sternum this bone is called the sternum manubrium is just this uh, upper part so we have the hyaline cartilage here this is the first rib this uh, cartilage is always known as the costal cartilages this cartilage the uh, costal cartilages and they, they, they do not permit any movement so they are examples of the primary cartilaginous joint in terms of secondary cartilaginous joint these are sometimes called as the symphysis symphysis uh, symphysis joint articulating material is the fibrocartilage example a pubic symphysis and the intervertebral disc etc so you must note the difference between the primary and the secondary cartilaginous joint the primary cartilaginous joint they are made of of uh, they are made up of uh, hyaline cartilage and they permit no movement while the secondary they are made up of fibrocartilage and they permit some degree of movement we shall discuss it in detail later about the structure of fibrocartilage and hyaline cartilage when we will be discussing about the histology on module 2 so these are just examples we have the pubic symphysis this is the pubic bone and here is where we call the pubic symphysis and this is the intervertebral disc in the vertebral column now let's uh, move to the third type of joint which is synovial joint synovial joint they are freely movable all of the synovial joint they allow movement has a fluid field joint called the synovial cavity and a synovial membrane lying the joint cavity or synovial cavity so the membrane has cells that security lubrication and that lubrication is called the synovial fluid and some joints may be transversely with any articular disc such as temporal mandibular, sternoclavicular, acromioclavicular, radio ulna, knee joint. The disc is attached to the joint capsule. Kotana kuziona hizo joint, nda kuziona hizo joint in detail joint in detail uh, some of them they have disc zinakuwa zina disc afu ile disc inakuwa attached to the joint capsule so the, the disc also help to to prevent friction at the joint so rather than having a fluid fluid ina kwepo lakini uh, fluid kisha kwepo pia kuna kwa kuna disc ambayo pia ina inasaidia katika ku prevent movement i mean ku prevent friction during movement so we have uh, about seven types of uh, of synovial joint about seven types and this they define structure and the terms of movement which they perform so we discuss them first in terms of explanation and then later we shall see on the diagram how are they seen uh, first we have the playing joint playing joint so in a playing joint permit gliding or sliding movement in the plane of particular surface as the name suggests plane is the near surface zone flat so the movement between the bones here is gliding zina kwa kama zina zina glide opposing the surfaces of the bone so the opposite surfaces of the bone are flat or almost flat they are either flat or almost flat with the movement limited by the uh, tight joint capsule plane joint are numerous and are nearly always small an example is the acromioclavicular joint between the acromion of the scapula and the clavicle. So, if you if you concentrate in the session of osteology, uh, I think you understand a little about the scapula and the clavicle. However, we shall discuss in detail about the about these bones of the upper limb when we we'll be discussing the osteology of the upper limb. But the scapula is the uh, like a triangular shape the flat bone present at the, at the shoulder of the upper limb and also the clavicle is the bone extending from the from the shoulder to the to the sternum ko taziona vizuri hizo kwenye osteology of the upper limb lakini the bone i mean the joint between uh, acromion process of scapula and clavicle it is called uh, it is a plain joint also we have the 
stenoclavicular stenoclavicular the joint between the sternum and the clavicle it is also the plane joint these are two most common examples of the plane synovial joint now let's move to the another group is the hind joint i know we know uh, about hind joint now to discuss sanata even in all level hind joint they permit flexion and extension only flexion and extension only movement that occur in one plane that is the sagittal sagittal plane or median plane so the movement of hind joint is only sagittal plane and these uh, joints are sometimes called as uniaxial joint because they allow movement only in one axis allowing the single axis that runs transversely thus hind joint are uniaxial joint the joint capsule of this joint is thin and the and lacks anteriorly and posteriorly where movement occur kwa hiyo uh, your joint in a thin pia in a fold kwenda anterior na kwenda posterior ambako joint na occur our commonest example of a uh, hind joint is elbow joint and elbow joint and the ankle joint kwa hiyo ankle joint ankle joint ankle knee pamoja na elbow ni joint ambazo zina zinajikana sana ni joint ya mguu i mean goat elbow joint ya kwenye mkono and the ankle joint pamoja na interphalangeal joint they are examples of the hind joint they allow only two movement flexion and extension in one in one plane that is sagittal so they are called uniaxial joints and then we have the chondroid joints they permit flexion and extension as well as abduction and adduction so as you can see it permits four types of movement so that means it permits movement in two planes thus chondroid joints are also biaxial they are biaxial because they permit movement in two axes one axis which is flexion and extension and another axis which is abduction and adduction so however movement in one plane that is sagittal is usually greater or free than in the other also circumduction more restricted than that of the saddle joints is also possible so circumduction is possible but it is restric restricted that's why they are called as biaxial not as multiaxial ko biaxial means it permits a uh, movement in only two planes and they have two convex articular surfaces two convex articular surface that articulate with two concave surfaces so manake one bone na kwenda two convex surface wakati another bone na kwenda two concave surface uh, our example is metacarpopharyngeal joint and the metatarsopharyngeal joint also antilanto occipital joint antilanto occipital joint is the joint between the atlas and the occipital bone atlas is the first uh first cervical vertebra kama ambapo tutaenda ku discuss kwenye head and neck kuhusu osteology of the head and neck tutaona the first cervical vertebra is called atlas and the the second is called axis these are named they have their special names because of their unique structure kama ambapo tutaenda ku discuss later so these are just examples of the chondroid joints they have two convex and two concave surface two convex surface they they, they articulate with the two concave surface then the fourth example is bone socket joints i know we know about the bone and socket joints even from our all level study so bone and socket joints is in allow movement in multi axis and planes so is in allow movement kwenye plane nyingi na kwenye axis nyingi cause na allow flexion extension abduction adduction medial lateral rotation and circumduction thus bone and socket joints are multi axial joints in these high mobile joints these are high high mobile joints this uh, spheroid surface of one bone moves within the socket of another so tunako kama tuna tuna a ball like structure of one bone and it is inserted into a structure like a socket of another bone for example the hip joint in the hip joint we have like the 
ball which is the head of femur which rotates him in the acetabulum so uh, in order for you to understand well about the acetabulum and the head of femur just go with me until the osteology of the lower limb tukafukona discuss lower limb osteology tutaona kuhusu head of femur and acetabulum and how were they rotating each other lakini pia tunataka kuona diagram yes another example of bone and socket joint is the shoulder joint which also allow all of those kinds of movement so this is the multiaxial joint now let's move to the pivot pivot joint a pivot joint they permit rotation around the central axis thus they are uniaxial they permit rotation around the central axis in this joint see a rounded process of bone rotates within a sleeve or ring so pivot joint they allow rotation rotation uh, around the central axis kwa hiyo uh, our common example is antelanto axilla joint kwa kama ni usema kwamba atlas the first cervical vertebra c1 and uh, axis the second uh, cervical vertebra c2 kwa hiyo the joint between the first cervical vertebra and the second cervical vertebra is the pivot joint also we have the proximal radio ulna joint which is also an example of the pivot joint allowing the the rotational movement around the medial axis our thick C type of the pivot joint is called saddle joint saddle joint they permit abduction and adduction as well as flexion and extension movement occurring around two axes at a right angle to each other two axes at right angle to each other thus saddle joint are by axial joint kwa sababu zina allow four types of movement flexion extension then uh flexion extension like pia abduction pamoja na adduction if you don't remember about this recap my video on the introduction and language of anatomy ko utakuja kuona kwamba saddle joint they allow uh, four types of movement and due to uh, these four types of movement we end up with the by axio uh, we end up to conclude that the saddle joint there by axio they allow movement in two plane so it is sagittal and a frontal the performance of this movement in a circular sequence that is circumduction is also possible the opposite articular surfaces are shaped like a saddle such that they are reciprocal concave and convex so one is concave and another is, is convex this is different from the from the chondroid joint where we had two two convex articular surfaces that are created with two concave surfaces so it is different with the uh, saddle joint ambayo inakuwa na one concave and another convex it is just one example is carpal metacarpal joints at the base of the first digit that is thumb in the saddle joint and then the last uh, type of synovial joint is ellipsoid joint ellipsoid joints in ellipsoid joints an elliptical convex articular surface fits into an elliptical concave articular surface now uh, the difference here between the saddle and elliptical is that uh, saddle it has concave and convex surface but they are not elliptical while in ellipsoid we have the elliptical concave then it it articulate with the elliptical convex the movement of flexion extension abduction and adduction can take place but rotation is impossible so it is impossible because they are elliptical and because they are elliptical they can't rotate this is different from the from the saddle joint which may allow the rotational movement even if it is not to the greater extent as compared to the ball and the socket joint so the example is the wrist joint that is radiocarpal radiocarpal joint the good example the, the the joint between the radius and the carpal bones of the upper limb now let's let's go to look over the diagram diagram of this type of bone this uh, diagram is taken from the snell a uh, snell anatomy by regions and you can go to visit the book and to see the diagram clearly if you will not understand here or even to get uh, more detail on the type of joints 
it is better to read books so this is the first which is the plane synovial joint here is the joint between the scapula this is the scapula and here is the clavicle so we have the acromioclavicular joint you have the acromion process of the scapula here acromion process then you have the clavicle so um, acromioclavicular joint is the plane synovial joint which allow two types of movement and these are uh, type of movement they are just like sliding over each other and then in B here in B uh, we have the hind joint which is elbow you have hind joint and as we said hind joint allow only one type of of movement flexion and extension it is uniaxial uniaxial so this is the hind joint in the in the elbow and also we said the knee is also the the hind joint the knee and the elbow knee and the anchor joint they are they are hind joint also in C in C here we have the pivot joint antilateral axial joint also we said the proximal radio ulna joint is, the, is an example for pivot joint now remember we said in the pivot joint uh, the joint allow uh, rotation along the central axis as you can see this is the atlas this is the axis so this is the first cervical vertebra this is the second cervical vertebra so here uh, we have like a, a hole here and this hole comes to fit here in this we will study it later comes to fit in this and then uh, this bone is allowed to rotate over this one and this is the joint which allows the rotation of the head Ko kama hiyo joint isingi kwa kutungikuwa atuwezi kuzungusha kichu Tuzungusha kichu kwa sabi ya Presence hii joint kwenye second cervical Vertebra uh, Lakini tukenda kwenye D is controlled joint D is controlled joint Ambao ni Metacarpal pharyngeal joint Na tusema controlled joint They have two convex surface Articulating with two concave surface That is controlled joint and have one, uh, this is the magnification of the controlled joint however it is not seen well like in the basic structure of controlled joint it also allow uh, just one type of, of movement because of its nature so it allow only I mean it is uniaxial allowing only flexion and extension that is D also it allows adduction, uh, abduction and uh, adduction for example is how you can see uh, in this uh, diagram below here and then uh, let's move to E. E is ellipsoid joint. E is ellipsoid joint. Now, if you remember, we said the ellipsoid joint. We have the elliptical convex surface articulating with the elliptical concave surface. So, because they are elliptical, they can perform only one type of movement. Uh, they perform only two types of movement. That is the flexion, uh, uh, extension, abduction, and adduction. But they can't allow circumduction that is rotational movement then f we have the saddle joint couple meter couple joint of the thumb we have the saddle joint that is f and in the saddle joint we said that in uh, one surface it is in concave another is in convex and we said the difference between the uh, ellipsoid and saddle is that uh, saddle has only saddle has only uh, one concave and one convex but they are not elliptical while in ellipsoid the surfaces they are elliptical and we said in controlloid we have two convex and concave surfaces very important to remember and then the last is G which is ball and socket joint allowing many kinds of movement which is the this is the hip joint as you can see this is what we call the acetabulum and this is the head of femur but we can discuss it in detail more when we discuss about the lower limb uh, this diagram was taken from Snell and this diagram is taken from Mule Mule clinical oriented anatomy so uh, I have put this uh, diagram in, in the slides also because Nimona and Elisea Vizuli so you can see uh, different parts of the body and the uh, types of joints here we have the pivot joint allowing the circumduction along the median uh, median axis kama ambavyo unaweza kaona hapa nilikwambia kwamba tunakoa kama tuna hole kwenye atlas which is C1 cervical vertebra ya kwanza na tuna hii 
tuna hii dense of the axis which is C2. Kwa this bone is able to rotate over this bone. So this is the example of the pivot joint. Kwa unaweza kaona uh, hii hapa ndio ambavyo inakuonyesha jinsi gani ambavyo inakuwa pivot joint allow the circumduction movement hapo yani rotation along the central axis. Then you have the ball and socket joint. Here we have the acetabulum, then you have the head of femur. Here this is the hip joint allowing many types of of movements the ball and socket joint and this is the model illustrating how the ball and socket joint is and then moving to here we have the metacarpo and then the proximal proximal pharynx here is the metacarpopharyngeal joint metacarpopharyngeal joint an example of the an example of the saddle joint this is an, uh, an example of the chondroid joint chondroid has uh, one concave and another another convex as you can see this at uh, the surface of this bone is concave and this is is i mean this is convex this is concave so for example this is a uh, convex and this is concave that is chondroid but in saddle as you can see in saddle we have two concave uh, we have two uh, convex and then you have two concave so are uh, two convex surfaces of one bone articulate with the two concave surface of another bone and in hind joint as you can see we have only uh, this structure just like a, a hole here and then another bone comes to bind here and allow only a single movement in one plane also we have the plane plane uh, plane sign of your joint which is an example in clavicle now uh, if we study Mule, Mule has classified the joint into six group has classified the uh, sign of your joint into six group instead of seven group so in Mule we don't have the ellipsoid joint because I told you that ellipsoid joint is just the uh, modification of uh, chondroid joints chondroid joint in in a chondroid joint we have uh, convex and concave but in a, in a elliptical the convex and concave surface they are elliptical in, in shape now let's move to the uh, just the generalized structure of synovial joint uh, in a structure synovial joint basic structure has the articulating surface of the bone covered by articular cartilage then you have the articular capsule we have the fibrous membrane synovial membrane then articular cavity con containing a truss of synovial fluid at the pressure below atmospheric outer supporting tissue ligaments muscle baza and sesamoid bones etc so different uh, bones they have different kinds of supporting tissue such as ligament muscles baza sesamoid bones etc as how we call uh, we shall see later for example in the knee joint we have the sesamoid bone called the patella which uh, is embedded in the in the tendon now this is the generalized structure of synovial joint you have the baza here baza kazi yake inafanya ku reduce friction yenyewe pale point ambapo muscle inaenda kwa touch kwenye mfupa baza inakuepo pale kwenye kwenye tendon ku prevent friction we have the a uh, periosteum of the bone you have the fibrous articular capsule we have the synovial membrane which correctively the the called joint capsule we have synovial fluid inside the joint cavity then the articular cartilage we have the bone and the, the ligament so uh in 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 conditions of inflammation this is the the uh the surfaces of two bones the uh, they rub together because of the inflammation uh and as you can see here inflammation has led to damage of the cartilage and then the the two bones they are they are rubbing together so this is called as the osteoarthritis and then you have the rheumatoid arthritis in which uh, we have the fluidy swollen inflamed synovial membrane so the swollen inflamed uh, synovial membrane is also associated with the accumulation of the fluid in the joint that is what you call the rheumatoid arthritis so for example this is the tendon here and this is the baza preventing the friction between the uh, the tendon of the muscle and the bone 
also this uh, for example this here is the the buzzer uh, uh, we have some of the technique for the treatment of or for joint problems or for diagnosis of joint problems for example if somebody has a uh, rheumatoid arthritis which you have seen in the previous slide uh, we need to perform a, a surgical procedure called atherosynthesis and in this procedure uh, we insert the needle into the joint and then you take the sample then you are going to the laboratory to examine the sample if it whether contain bacteria viruses or what causes it to uh, what causes the inflammatory reaction in that joint so this is this is the clinical procedure in diagnosis of the rheumatoid arthritis which is called atherosynthesis then uh, we have other uh, diagnostic methods such as x-ray and in x-ray you can see uh, for example here you can see how the articulating surface of female and tibia they can they can meet themselves so in x-ray bones they appear as white bones they appear as white and air appears as black in x-ray now let's uh, just discuss a little about the factors affecting the joint stability we have about three factors affecting the stability of a joint and the first factor is articulating surface articulating surface so it depends uh, how the bone one bone articulates with the other bone shapes play an important role in the joint stability for example a concave socket and a concave head form a stable joint such as hip joint kuna kuja kuona kwa mfano kwenye ball and socket joint kwa mfano hip joint inakuwa more stable hata inakuwa sio rahisi mfupa wa hip joint kukuta umeondoka lakini kwa mfano kwenye plain synovial joint inakuwa it's very easy ile joint ku dislocate kwa that is the difference unakuja kuona kwamba kwenye ball and socket inakuwa it's not easier for dislocation of joint to occur also we have a ligament fibrous or elastic ligament they tend to stabilize the joint because sometimes uh, these joint they, they perform different kinds of movement and we need uh, different types of joint so as to to make sure that the bones they remain in the uh, original location then you have muscle tone muscle tone means the strength of contraction of the muscle ko around the joint tunakuwa tuna muscles ambazo zinakuwa zinaizunguka ile joint and then uh, inategemea sa always kama tukiwa tuna muscles nyingi zinazunguka joint uh, the muscles they can make the joint stable for example a good example is the shoulder joint we have what you call the rotator cuff muscles about four types of muscles they are called the rotator cuff muscles and the uh, uh, the rotator cuff muscles zinasaidia katika ku stabilize shoulder joint manake uh, they act like pulling the shoulder joint to both sides kwa kitu kinakuwa stabilized and also we have the quadri uh, quadriceps femoris which stabilize the the knee joint so rotator cuff stabilizes shoulder and quadriceps femoris uh, stabilize the knee joint we shall discuss these muscles later uh, when we will be discussing about the elements of um, myology and when we will be discussing about the upper limb and lower limb so this diagram is from the uh, is from the snell's book and you can see uh, these are just articulating surface as you can see in the hip joint you have the head and then you have the acetabulum so because the head uh, is inserting there in the acetabulum it is very difficult for this head to dislocate from this point and then uh, the second factor which affect the stability is presence of ligament as how you can see we have the cruciate ligament here in the knee joint we have another ligament here and we have the median collateral this is the lateral collateral so you can see the presence of joint they allow uh, they, they they help this joint not to dislocate i mean the presence of ligament they help this joint not to dislocate also we have the uh we have the muscle tone here for example the uh, muscle are pulling these bones below here upwards so you can see kwamba hapa juu kwa sababu tunakuwa tuna bone manake because this muscle has a certain strength which pulls it up it is very difficult for this joint to dislocate so these are the three factors which affect the stability of a joint and now let's look about the accessory structures of joints we have three accessory structure we have ligament we have buzzer and we have synovial sheath 
So ligament tunafahamu kwamba ligament is a cord or a band of connective tissue uniting two structures commonly found in association with the joints. Ligament are of two types. Uh, most are composed of dense band of collagen fiber and unstretchable under normal conditions such as iliofemoral ligament of the hip joint and the collateral ligament of the elbow joint ko hizo hapo zinakuwa not stretched lakini you have the second type is composed of largely elastic tissues and can therefore regain its original length after stretching ko for example you have the ligamentum flavum of the vertebral column and the calcaneo calcaneo vicular ligament of the foot ko hizi ni just examples of the ligament lakini it is just for you to know then you have the baza a baza is the lubricating device consisting of a closed fibrous sac lined with a uh, delicate thymus membrane it is well associated by a film of a viscous fluid baza are found whenever tendon rub against the bone ligament or other tendons kwa kama nivyo sema kule mwanzoni a baza inakuwa ni fluid fluid sac ambayo inakaa sema ambapo always a tendon inakuwa ina ina rub with the bone kwa pale tunakuwa tuna joint but a baza help to prevent to prevent friction also we have the synovial sheath this is also the associating structure in the in the joint then we have different kinds of movement of of joints for example we have a translation we have flexion we have extension adduction abduction rotation medial and lateral rotation pronation supination inversion evasion and circumduction so we have different types of movement of joints as how we discussed in the languages of anatomy now let's see about the clinical application tunako tuna magonjwa kama rheumatoid arthritis ambayo tume discuss kule mwanzoni rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease of multiple joints that lead joints deformed in several condition kwa kama unaweza kuona hizi joints za mkono haziwezi kufanya kazi tena because of the uh, late stage of rheumatoid arthritis ambayo imetokea kwa huyo mtu so this is the uh, applied anatomy unapoenda kwenye clinic we meet with these cases and then we have the gout and pseudo gout arthritis gout inatokana na accumulation of the uric acid in small joints especially big toe kwa hiyo unaweza kuona kwamba uh, this is how the gout is seen as cause the inflammation this redness is because of the inflammation also you can see this uh, how the gout is seen kwa uh, gout is simply because of the accumulation of the uric acid and it is called gout or pseudo gout arthritis then let's uh, see about the normal curves of vertebral column vertebral column always contain curves if a vertebral column will not contain curves uh, that human being cannot live ko uh, cervical curvature we have the cervical curvature which uh, is convex forward this is the cervical curvature convex forward then you have the thoracic curvature convex backward this one is convex back backward we have the lumbar curvature this one which is the convex forward then you have the sacral curvature is convex backward so you can see uh, you can see the convex forward convex backward convex forward convex backward this is how the the vertebral column should be seen as you can see here this is the convex forward cervical uh, cervical curvature convex backward thoracic curvature convex forward lumbar and then convex backward the sacral curvature this is just four naturally curves of the vertebral column without this you get the, some of the problems of the vertebral column and then when you are going uh, about to finish our topic let's discuss about the concept of Hitton's law Hitton's law is the law which explains the innervation of muscles and the joints so this law states that a nerve that innervates a joint also innervates the muscle that moves the joint and the skin that covers the distal attachment of the muscle so nerve which innervates the muscle also innervates the joint i mean the nerve which innervates the joint also innervates the muscle that move the joint and also the skin cover the distal attachment of the muscle kwa hiyo that is the hilton's law kwa sababu gani kwa sababu manake uh, 
hii joint inavyokuwa innovated maana pia muscle hiyo inatakiwa innovated kwa ajili ya ku perform different kinds of of movement and this marks the end of our session uh marks the end of our session discussing about the arthrology the study of joints and our reference here we have the Richard Snell uh, chapter 1 Richard Snell clinical anatomy by regions then you have the Frank Net Atlas also we have the Mule as I told you we have the Mule clinically oriented anatomy clinically oriented anatomy 7th edition this is uh, Richard Snell the 9th edition and the uh, Frank Net book I don't remember where it's edition but it's the last edition Thank you everybody. Let me wish you nice studies.